Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today, we're looking at Infinity Incorporated. This is issue 13. This was $1.25, April 1985 by DC Comics. If you notice that there's no Comics Code Authority on this comic. Why? Because this came out directly to the newsstand. So the DC at the time had two lines of comics. <clears throat> Excuse me. They had the, the direct market, which was this, that went to comic book stores. And then they had newsstand comics, meaning comics that you bought at 7-Eleven and everything like that. So this was like... the I guess the infancy of, of, of uh, the comic book store. And, uh, you know, you, you, you couldn't buy this at a 7-Eleven. So uh, you could make it a little bit more suggestive, but this was regular DC. So they didn't really want, they kept kind of kept it at all ages. But you see, there's a little bit of maturity in this, as you can see. All right, so what is Infinity Incorporated? Infinity Incorporated was a team of, of superheroes that were the children, the offspring of the Justice Society. And the Justice Society were the original DC superheroes. Originally, the Justice Society were like, was like Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, stuff like that. But then, you know, and, and they were on Earth too. I know it's confusing that the original ones were on Earth too, but this, these were the Golden Age superheroes. Okay, these came out first. And then they were kind of forgotten about in the 50s, uh, comic books were brought back again and we had like the modern superman modern batman modern or, or silver age if you want to call them for lack of a better term and then what was it like 1955 56 i forget the exact year they they had they they had the flash go and meet the golden age flash and the earth one and earth two and the multiverse was created yes the multiverse was created way way back in like 1954 in comic books so the the original team they they had children. And then later on, after the crisis of infinite earth, the two earths merged. And we'll talk about that later. So here, this is Hector Hall. This is the silver scarab. And he's the child of Hawkman and Hawkwoman. This is Fury. She's the child of the original Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor. This is Jade. And uh, she's the daughter of her and original Green Lantern. And this is Nuklon. He's the godson of the original Adam. And I hate the name Nuklon. Oh my god, it's painful to even say. So a thorn grows in paradise. This is by Roy Thomas, Don Newton, and Joe Rubenstein. And we'll talk I'll, I guess right now is a good time to talk about the uh, yeah, we'll talk about the, the creative team. Roy Thomas, I, I talked about a million times. And I erroneously said that he was hired as as, as a child or whatever. I got him mixed up with Jim Shooter. Uh, Roy Thomas, I think he was 24 years old and he was a school teacher when, when he got the job to start writing comics. But this guy, I've said this over and over again. He's a walking encyclopedia of, of all things comic book. And you'll see some of that seeping through in this comic. So I'll talk about that later on. The reason why I wanted to talk about this comic was, was Don Newton. I was rereading this comic, and then I, I, I just looked up the creators, which I kind of do now because of uh, this channel and everything, and I learned a little bit about Don Newton. I've always been a fan of Don Newton. Um, who is he? Um, he he wrote a lot of, he, he, he's an artist, and he drew a lot of uh, covers for like science fiction novels and things like that. Uh, he worked for Charlton Comics, and then from Charlton, he went to DC, he went back and forth to DC, and, and uh, you know, back then, if you didn't have an exclusive contract, you kind of went back and forth trying to get the better deal. You know, you went fork for hire. So if, if Marvel gave you more, you went to Marvel. If DC gave you more. And he was one of these guys that, like, went back and forth. Uh, apparently, Joe Rubenstein was, was one of his his best friends. And more on that later. And Joe Rubenstein's a quality inker. So he wanted to go to Captain America. He wanted to go to Captain America. He wanted to go to Marvel and, and draw Captain America, but he, he, he couldn't get that. So they offered him the Avengers because Captain America is the event. And then he did Avengers annual number nine, which was inked by Joe Rubenstein. And then for whatever reason he left, he went back to, uh, to DC and he did some Batman and stuff like that. But he, and he, he was also a student of CC Beck, the original cap, the artist for Captain Marvel. And he went, you know, what he wanted to do the, all-Star Squadron. That was being published at the time. So Roy Thomas snatched him, said, hey, I, this you don't have the All-Star Squadron, but how about Infinity Incorporated? These are their children. So he was kind of interested in that. So he he uh, he drew issue 11, he drew issue 12, and then he started issue 13. And by the time issue 11 was, was like published, Don had a heart attack. 
suffered a massive heart attack and he was in a coma for a little while and joe rubenstein was exclusive for marvel at the time jim shoot joe uh, jim shooter excuse me said go 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 help your buddy go help your buddy and he he went and he finished this art so this was actually the last artwork of don newton uh, inked by his his longtime buddy joe rubenstein and you know their friend roy thomas so that's why there's a bunch of reasons why to, to do this comic but once i realized it was the last published work of don newton i was like yeah i'm going to showcase this so okay five minutes and i'm going to open up the comic so v the comic book we don't need to look at the indicia but let's check it out uh if you incorporated 13 blah blah nine, copyright 1984 the comic came out in 1985 so here we have the splash page a thorn grows in paradise roy thomas penciler uh penciler gee my mouth roy, my, sometimes my mouth is faster than my brain roy thomas writer editor and i always thought that was a mistake to edit your own work and he, i'll point that out later joe rubinson guest inker courtesy of marvel comics that's because uh jim shooters was being a nice guy and, and let him finish his buddy's work don newton and Dan Thomas, co-father, that's Roy's wife, John Clark, letterer, and Roy and Tallinn Colors. So here we have these two are macking out in the back seat, and we have Nuclon and Jade. Nuclon has a, a, a crush on Jade, and uh, I think Jade is just being flirty. She, that's her personality, the flirty girl, the, the hot flirty girl. Um, these two were childhood friends. They were separated, and then they, they met in college and became, they actually got married they had a child long confusing story um when, when i might as well talk about it now when the crisis on infinite earth merged earth one and earth two no comic suffered more than infinity incorporated and no character suffered more than than uh than fury with a close second to, to hector hall although he still survives in, in the current marvel uh marvel in the current dc universe look, look at this car that's their flying car by the uh, Star Spangled Kid, so I just got distracted by the cheesiness. So, the original woman, one woman had a daughter, and when, you know, the Ur merged, her mother didn't exist anymore, so she she became the, the second Fury. They retroactively made a Golden Age Fury that was vaguely related to uh, Greek mythology, and uh, she got married to Hector Hall, who, you know, like, as... as, as the, all the versions of Hawkman are true. They're all true, you know, and whatever. So he, he he went from the Silver Scarab. He became the new Sandman, you know, the cheesy one who lived in the Dream Steam. And then he became Sand, like the protege of, of Hawkman and, and the and Wesley Dodd Sandman. And that's where he is today. So for a while, he lived in the Dream Steam. So they lived in the Dream Stream. They could they conceive the child, and the child was born in the Land of Dreams. So Neil Gaiman took that and made their child Daniel, the new incarnation of Morpheus, the king of dreams from the, from the Neil Gaiman 90s Sandman comic. Long convoluted story. So she, there's going to be Alita Hall in, in the uh, TV show. And note that she's blonde hair and blue eyes. And the less said about that, the better. Great costume. New clan. I love this costume. Hate the name. He becomes Adam Smasher. So he becomes Sand. He becomes Adam Smasher. And I don't even know if J Jade exists anymore. And I don't even know if she exists anymore. Okay, so let, let's go through. So what this is, this is a character building. They just, they just finished up a major arc. The, the first 12 issues of, of the series was like a, a get-to-know-you uh, grand scheme, reintroducing all the Golden Age heroes and, and their relationships with the character. So this is just like an in-between character building episode, episode issue, whatever you want to call it. And Jade's explaining her power. She has Green Lantern powers, you know, and she, she has this star-shaped, starburst-shaped symbol on her palm. She calls it the Power Pulse. And it, it glows with her heartbeat and, and her mood, stuff like that. And through that, she does Green Lantern powers. She could also turn herself like regular Caucasian flesh toned, you know? And here they're going to... And she, she has like vaguely undefined Green Lantern abilities. So she could phase through walls and stuff like that. And she jumps in the water to go through. But she's super strong. She has like Wonder Woman powers. So she she's jumping. And uh, Hank Hall, at this point, as the Silver Scarab, he made a, a suit out of the nth metal, which is a, some, you know, magical science metal that can absorb energy and redirect it and whatever. So so he's actually redirecting light and making anti-gravity and he can make laser beams and whatever. A lot of these characters, their powers are vaguely undefined. So they're flying down and poor Nuclon, who the character of, of Al Rothstein, right? That's that's his name. I, I like him. He's he's like a good, naive, 
good-hearted character. I, I like that. Like, he reminds me of, of Sam Guthrie, Cannonball. He's just a good, you know, corn-fed, big, lovable guy with the horrible name Nuclon. And his, what are his powers? Uh, his powers kind of grew as time, but it started out he was just seven feet tall and super strong. Then he became invulnerable. Then he could change his density, and then I think he could get, get taller and smaller. So, you know, he, he's actually... A, a, pretty tough guy and they change it nowadays he's like kind of like an angry tough guy but i liked him as this gentle giant cat in the character so there they're all jumping in they go and swim in and you know what are they doing they they take it off their uh their bathing suits you know she's in her sexy bikini and she's like come on in lover and he's like oh he's all shy i like that big you know i'll, I'll, I'll unpack everything he's like okay you go unpack everything and then he leaves and then he comes back he's like hey I, i'm ready you know i got my bathing suit on and she's like i'll protect you and then he jumps in you know he's goofing around and she's like i got my bathing suit on he puts on a snorkel and he finds out she doesn't have a bathing suit on she's the free-spirited crazy and he's all like oh you know he kind of liked her he was you know he was like uh maybe maybe like if we go on a trip together maybe we'll hold hands and stuff like that and here she is naked in the water and he's just like uh <laughs> and, she, and she made the snorkel for him so <laughs> go ahead al make you move make you move and there you go so he's all embarrassed he doesn't know what to do and she's like oh uh you know besides clothes are just customs after all she's justified but she realized that like she went a little too far too fast and she's like besides i can make whatever clothes i want so she's playing with her powers you know uh cleopatra elizabeth taylor we, what do we got here uh, rita hayward and then he goes maybe i will like it better if i dress up as lita a little bit of yeah, catsy stuff so then she's could decide on this like a dorothy lamar sarong in the old movies and here she's going out looking for al she's like i didn't mean to hurt your feelings so whatever and he finds them that now they're skinny dipping in the water and like you know they're getting some lovey-dovey going on and he's like what are you doing we're jumping in. he's like i jen i'm coming over here because jen doesn't wear a bathing suit and he's like well who does oh and poor al uh, dun, dun, dun. okay one of my early comics had these characters. I remember getting it as a kid before I could even read. And it had these three characters. And it, and I, 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 I told you, some of my comics kind of disappeared. That comic disappeared. And I'm still looking for it. So if anybody could help me in the comments. like I'm talking like around 75, 74. If anybody knows of the, these characters' appearances around that time. I don't know if it was a, a Batman or what. But I'm, I'm looking for a comic. Okay, so here we go. So now the goofiness is over. And they're around the campfire. And Jade, I told you, she could transform her skin color to normal. So she turns to normal and finds this woman, Rose, something. And now you know, she doesn't want to freak her out by being all green or anything. Let her just think that they're all, like, nice, normal teenagers. And they put a little age lines on her and stuff like that. So she's like, yeah, this island is a strange island. It's got some strange uh, plant life, and I'm investigating it and stuff like that. And they're, they're just talking about, a, you know... What are you doing on this island? What are we doing on this island? And blah, 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 blah. And she's like, for whatever reason, they start opening up. And she's talking about whenever she was a kid, she had this nightmare about this creature of this Frankenstein type who was half man, half uh, swamp ooze. And he would rise out of the swamp and blah, 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 blah. And he goes, and then I found out that the, he was real. He was Solomon Grundy. And uh, Solomon Grundy was uh, an original Green Lantern villain. And he was. He was kind of like the swamp thing. Uh I forget the name of the guy's Silas something, but he, he was this greedy guy and he fell into the swamp. He was murdered, fell into the swamp. And then on a Monday, he came out of the, uh, out of the swamp as, as Solomon Grundy. So he's like a swamp thing, Frankenstein mix. And he's been wildly inconsistent over the years. So in the, in the Starman comic books by, by James Robinson, they, uh, made it so that every time he's killed he comes back with a new personality and one of the personalities he's he was like a nice guy who became a good guy and a friend of starman so they were always protecting that incarnation because he's an unstoppable juggernaut of super strength and it was their buddy i, I thought it was a pretty cool story i, I kind of like solomon grundy and i and i like when uh, they uh they fix continuity like that. You know, there was a problem and they fixed it. And now he's like, yeah, I have these crazy dreams from a rampaging monster. Cause you know, he's, he's, he, he's always afraid he can't control strength cause he's a good guy. And then Helena's talking about, she has these dreams because she knows the f for a fact that Medusa is real and Cyclops is real because you know, 
that, that's that's her origin and then he's always dreaming that uh he's being buried alive and he's gonna reincarnate but the coffin won't open how that is just terrifying and why does he have that dream because his parents are hawk man and hawk woman and that's what they do they die they get reincarnated in, throughout history so there's always hawk man and hawk woman you know and they alternate between two planets uh jeff johns can explain it much better than i can but i i, I kind of like that though but that, that is to me that is the scariest nightmare be alive in your coffin and then you, you, you there's nothing you can do about it. and she's talking about um she sometimes has a nightmares that like she has a split personality and blah 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 dun 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 and now she's talking about her sister thorn and her they, they assisted this doctor whose name i don't remember and he's, he's talking about this this in college how they would and, and her sister uh, thorn was always like oh look at that i like the thorny part of the rose and she's like i like the sweet flowery part of the rose and rose was crazy and all boy hungry and always fighting and stuff like that and uh, she's always telling me look at you yeah you're just too nice and too pretty and you know rose is bad uh thorn is bad and i'm good and i'm good and you know she became the villain thorn and she's like, yep. Yeah. And uh, I, I came to this island to get away from her because she was like always making my life hell. And, uh, and they're like, Thorn, hmm, did, did, wasn't, didn't I, my father have a, a villain named Thorn? Whatever. But yeah, whatever. So that she's leaving. And now, you know, he's wondering, should he make a move? She's wondering, why didn't he make a move? And, you know, and then she's going to sleep and vines are attacking her. He wakes up, she's gone. Put, look at that. That is a cool costume. That is just a cool costume. And I must point out that there's heavy joe uh, R R rubenstein inks in this because like i said don newton died had a heart attack at the, throughout this comic and thorn is like be quiet or i'll kill her blah 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 so he, you know they, they're fighting and she's yelling and screaming and threatening and she's like i don't know why but i was compelled to take this kid oh look at this is the end to the crisis and now uh, she's throwing thorns at him and so this is before his intangibility powers uh, showed up so he's at this point he's just a big strong guy that's right this is some of his earlier appearances so now i, I don't know i thought this was a cool costume fury um, i don't know why if they don't bring her back who knows and then silver scarab i don't know i think he could be redone i i know they in kingdom come they they, they put him back in this costume and they have a some pretty cool designs for him i, I liked alex ross did a good good job reimagining a lot of these people and now they're fighting and here's you know these these cosmic blasts that he fires and they're fighting and fighting and she hits him over the head she gets clubbed and she beats them all dun, dun, dun. and oh that's right he, he's he's like i gotta save everybody i gotta save everybody i gotta save everybody and this is where he discovers his intangibility powers i did it i did it and then he makes himself more dense so he's this is where he discovers these powers that's right and she's freaking out because he ripped apart this plant thing and she feels it and the warlord toys and arion arion is back and that gives them enough time to recover and he blasts the tree into fire and thorn goes running off into the woods and she's like we got to go rescue Rose, what have happened? There's a sister, and Rose is over here crying. So they're the same person. Like you didn't know that. It's the oldest trick of the book. So Rose went to this island to stay, to hide, to protect the, pe the, the civilization from her other personality, which is Thorn. Ta-da! And later on, we find out that this is the mother of Jade, and Jade's brother Obsidian. And speaking of which. Here we go. This is McFarland. So this, so the next issue is the first comic book work of, of Todd McFarland. Ever hear of that guy? Todd McFarland kind of came became a little bit famous. So, uh, this is the first public published work of Todd McFarland, you know, as a professional. And he, he took over Infinity Incorporated. So we got the Star Spangled Kid, a cheesy, uh, I, I find cheesy, Star Spangled Kid's a horrible name. Costume's kind of cool. He has this cosmic belt that he can hit the button and it charges him with vaguely undefined cosmic powers, very similar to the Silver Scarab. Jade, she's got Green Lantern abilities. Nuclon, we already discussed him. Uh, this is uh, Fury. She's, you know, a Wonder Woman type. I guess I'll be polite and say that. And this is Northwind. This is the godson of, of Hawkman, the original Hawkman. They found a, 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 a 
a world, uh, not a world, uh, a, a hidden city. That's such a trope in comic books. Wakanda is not the only hidden city. There's hidden cities everywhere. Tripping over hidden cities. Of Feveria, which is these bird human people. And uh, a scientist, Dr. Cantrell, went there and fell in love with one of the bird people. And a little bird baby was born. And that's Norda. Norda Cantrell. Northwind. I don't know. They could have come up with a better design. I don't know. I, I don't mind the name. The origin. Take it or leave it. But uh, the mask needs a little bit of work. And this is my favorite design in all. That, that's Obsidian. This is this is Jenny, Hayden, and Todd Rice. Todd Rice. Horrible name. Todd Rice. I'm Todd Rice. But he's another one who was a good guy. Just just a, his father. Like he was. He was adopted. His mother died, his father became an alcoholic, and he was just like a neglected kid. Just a poor luck kid. And she grew up in a nice loving family of like, not rich, but upper middle class. So she, you know, wanted for nothing. So, and then they found each other. She has the light Green Lantern powers. He has darkness powers. So he could turn into a shadow. So he could like pass through walls. He could phase through objects. And uh, he, he, like later on, he finds out that he's bulletproof. He gets shot and he flinches. He doesn't, he couldn't duck out of the way. And he's like, oh my God, I'm bulletproof. I, and I, I always like that. Like, how do you know if you're bulletproof? You know what I mean? I, I, I get superpowers. The last thing I'm going to do is have a friend shoot me to find out if I'm bulletproof. You know, that's the kind of power you stumble upon. And that's exactly what happened. Pretty cool. Um, she was the flirty outgoing one. He was the introverted one to the point where he didn't have a personality. And they forgot about him, you know? Later on, he just kind of like faded into the background as suits his power. And there was a comic called Manhunter. And they brought him back as a supporting character. And he just showed up at a barbecue with his boyfriend. There. He became DC Comics' first openly gay superhero. Nobody cared. The world didn't explode. Fires didn't start. The apocalypse didn't happen. People accepted him. Why? Because it kind of felt natural. He had no personality. They didn't explore it. It didn't contradict past characterizations of the character. It, it just was like, okay, you know, you're going to do it with the character. Do it with this character. You know, he, he, he kind of was a cipher. So they brought him back. And then here's what I thought was, was bizarre. They rebooted DC and they made Scott Lang, his father, gay. And then these two were never born. So DC literally got rid of their first openly gay superhero character to replace, to, to, to make a straight character their, a gay one. When they had one, you know, and this is what, 1985. Come on, guys. I keep saying this. People who think there was no diversity in comic books never read comic books back then it's just a cool thing that people are saying right now rant over i, I whenever i rant i always imagine people are just gonna mess unsubscribe but there you go and here's here's the letter page uh, star trek meanwhile back cover we got some uh transformers or whatever i never got into trans i was too old for transformers but here you go i really like this it was a it was uh a change of pace story, you know, like clean the palette kind of story after after a very large 12 issue uh, opening comic that I thought was a really good story. And then this one was like, you know, didn't feature a million characters. They, they brought the team down and it was just like a little coming of age, little uh, characterization story. And, and I and I really liked it. And then when I found out it was literally Don Newton's last work because the poor guy had a heart attack. I was like, all right, I'm going to showcase this. All right. Went on for 20 minutes. I went for 13 minutes longer than I should. I keep trying to get these down to 10 minutes, and I apologize. But thank you for all your new subscribers. Thank you for the old subscribers. Thank you for the, the views seem to be going up. The comments are going up. Thank you so much for everybody. I appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video, guys. I'm having problems with the internet. I, it just seems to be a long thing. I use the same settings, and sometimes the video looks like craps. I, I don't know. what to, I, I, I got to fix things. All right, may, Maybe I need a new phone. I don't know. All right? I... I I don't know. I don't know what to do. If anybody has any suggestions, I am always open to suggestions. And I'm also open to uh, for uh, requests for comic books. If I have the comic book, of course I will do it. I'll be a jerk not, not to. All right, see you tomorrow, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.